Hey there guys and well, welcome to F. P1 and welcome to the Post Podium Podcast, the series where it's been a few hours uh, after the Grand Prix and now we can sit and talk about it. Now the, now the emotions have died down a little bit. That said, the emotions after that one are still... It, we're on the Monday now and I'm still not over what happened less than 24 hours ago. Pierre Gasly taking the win ahead of Carlos Sainz and Lance Stroll. Not really what we expected coming into the weekend, but... Here I am today, Post Podium Podcast, quite a lot to talk about. I'm delighted to be joined by a fellow YouTuber on this one as well. Uh, absolutely delighted to be joined by Elliot from Elliot Talks F1. Elliot, how are you to begin with? Uh, and yeah, how's your lockdown been? Yeah, doing good. Uh, finished up work a few weeks ago before I'm going off to uni. So getting ready for that now in a four, four days. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so nice and stressful, yeah. but yeah, had a nice, uh, nice emotional weekend to top it off. <laughs> Yeah, quite a uh, quite a good send off before we head up to yeah. uni, and of course, yeah, first year it's always always a bit fun heading down there. But um, yeah, how how do, where do we even start with this one? I think there's so much to talk about. I, I guess Pierre, really. Yeah, I, I was going to say we weekend. should start the high points or the low points. Which ones? Well, let, let, let's start with we'll start yeah. with positivity. Pierre yeah. Gasly, what a race for the Frenchman today uh, or, yeah. or yesterday even. I'm yeah. I'm still I'm still pinching myself. I still feel like I've woken up. I had a dream last night that we were on fourteen thousand subscribers. I was absolutely gassed, and I woke up thought oh, that was a, that, that uh, was a dream. And then, I, then, then I was like, oh, hang on, was did Gasly win or was that a dream as well? And no, it it, it was. Yeah. It's it's just surreal. And I, I we've seen obviously that that team win before at uh, the same track twelve years yeah. ago with Sebastian Vettel, but just watching it, it it, it was just something else. Like how. What do you take from his weekend, and, and how do you think that's going to, you know, boost his fortunes going forward, do you think? Well, I think, so the season so far has been, he's smashed out of the park, really. He's really yeah. put the middle finger up to Helmut. And <laughs> if anything, I've cemented him as someone that will be in a top team in the future, will be fighting. I never knew if he would be fighting for world championships. I knew I thought he'd fight for wins, but... I don't know, just seeing how he drove the race, how he controlled it perfectly when he was out front, he's probably got... I could see him going out there and doing it. Definitely. Yeah. No, I completely agree. I, I, Again, that whole World Championship thing, especially after you know his, his start to 2019 with Red Bull, which, let's be honest with you, wasn't great. Well, that's an understatement. Yeah. But, you know, <laughs> now, having seen his performance this year, I think if he has a car that worked with that uh, Alpha Tauri and the Toro Rosso before it obviously worked with his driving style which I think is what really hinders them at Red Bull because Red Bull are very much you know simping Max Verstappen let's <laughs> let, let's let's be honest let's yeah. let's, let's be honest no. that, that's that's what Red yeah. Bull is like Come at the moment it's, it's got a... raging hard on for Max <laughs> <laughs> exactly and you know it, it's you know, Pierre got into that team with a car he's unfamiliar with and not really the support network that he has at Alpha Tauri. And, you know, as much as people slag off Franz Toss for being a little bit, you know, one-dimensional and angry all the time, you know, I feel like the, the relationship between those two and the relationship that Pierre has with the entire team really works. And that's why we've seen performances like we saw at Silverstone, like we saw at Spa a week ago, and like we saw yesterday with his win in Monza. So I guess the question now is, and, you know, he even said this morning... I'm ready to go back to Red Bull. But the question really on this one is, is that the right thing for him? And for me, I I, I see the answer. I see why. I see yes. Because let's say he stays at Alpha Tauri for another year and then all of a sudden that team fall off the pace and he can't show off his skills. That's going to make it very hard to get into another top team uh, for 2022. Getting his foot in the door at Red Bull could help him. It puts him in a, in a car that's definitely going to be fighting up there for podiums. The question is, and the question I guess Red Bull are going to have, is are we going to see a repeat of 2019? So, I th I think that, I mean, if he feels ready, if, if he feels ready to go back, then, well, Alex, obviously you know Alex is dear to my heart, but if Alex is having the dip in form, swap him around for a couple of races, see see if he has the has it there, see if he can try it. Like, we've seen reports of, um, is it Antonio Felix da Costa maybe coming in for a race? Uh, that's news uh, to me uh, uh, Portimao so, uh, is it Portimao yeah in Portuguese Grand Prix and um, so maybe give Pierre the Red Bull seat give Felix Antonio Felix Costa the Alfa Tauri seat for a right. race that so, is news to me I didn't yeah. realise I didn't realise that would be amazing to see so, the Costa back in that back in form well in form of the one because he never got in there never, yeah 
Yeah, I mean, for those that don't know who Felix da Costa is, I put a video out on Red Bull's history of killing talent, which has got a bit of a bit of bit of mixed responses. Let's say that there's a few there's a few Red Bull simps that aren't particularly happy with that one. But you know, da Costa is one of those drivers that I think should have made it to Formula One yeah. and 100%. slipped through the cracks. I think it was because he was coming up at the same time as Max was and Kvyat was. He there was just never a space that was open for him, no. and we've seen what he's done in Formula E now. I'd love to see da Costa in in Portimao. The uh, the not the Argentinian Grand Prix. No, I'm, not no, gonna not ma- Argentinian. I'm not, <laughs> not going to make that mistake again. Um, but you know, you mentioned Alex Albon. I think yep. we've got we've got to talk about him. Yep. It wasn't great this weekend. Right. It wasn't a great weekend for Red Bull on a whole. In fairness, Verstappen seemed off the pace. Uh, a bit of a big off weekend for him. You know, we're usually up to see him. You know, fight with the front, fight the Mercedes. Don't think it was all necessarily his fault. I think it came down to the car as well. It wasn't really set up for Monza. Uh, a little bit too draggy and and just didn't really help him over the whole of the weekend. Yeah, I know. It was a but bit it was just weird. a weird one, wasn't it? Yeah, so obviously they run the high rake, which you're just adding downforce onto your car, which obviously is going to mm. increase the drag, so that's never going to help you. But then practice, practice one, Max had his spin and his off. The balance never really seemed super tuned in for that car, for either of the drivers. I mean, Alex almost got knocked out in Q1, mm. saved by the fact that that pretty much everyone below him was had a Ferrari engine or was a Williams. <laughs> so that shouldn't be happening. I mean, Alex hasn't had a standout season. I mean, I'll be the first to admit that, and I'm a massive fan of his. So it hurts to then see the performance that Red Bull had over the weekend where it just seemed terrible. Yeah, so. no, I, I, I agreed. And I think with the way that Monza is, it's... A circuit where if you make a little mistake, because of the high-speed nature of it, it's very easy to go off. We saw that with Leclerc in the race, you know, that massive accident. He had one little twitch through the parabolica, and bang, he's in the wall, you know? Uh, and that was a high-speed accident as well. That Red Bull has never... It, it, although it's looked better in the last few races, especially at the start of the season, it looked very twitchy and very difficult to handle. We saw both Max and Alex having spins and having crashes as well due to that kind of twitchy nature of, of, of the Red Bull car. And... I feel that that's re- that combined with the type of track Monza is really isn't a good combination. And I don't think that the drivers maybe had the confidence in the car to really extract the most out of it this weekend. The Alpha Tower, on the other hand, and you know, I was speak, I was watching the um, the Sky coverage. I, I I don't think I need therapy after the amount of mistakes the Crofty made. But one but one good thing that was was brought up was. Uh, Go back a year ago uh, at, at Belgium when obviously that switch happened and Gazza went back to, to Toro Rosso at the time and Alex moved up to Red Bull. The first thing Alex said was, it's a quicker car, but it's a harder car to drive. And the first thing Pierre said was, it's a slower car, but it's a much easier car to drive. And that, I think, is where we saw the benefits of today. You know, Alpha Tauri quicker than that Red Bull, uh, yeah. especially towards the end of the race. Yeah, I think that the Red Bull seems it's very much front end based, like, Whereas you have like the Ferrari where it seems a lot more rear end limited. And mm. Alex did an interview where he was saying that throughout his whole junior career, he he loves a car that's really twitchy on the front end. And then he came to Red Bull and then Max is almost dialing the nose in twice as far as Alex feels comfortable doing. And yeah. Alex is saying he drive, drove with like a tighter front end than like Charles and George and like Charles when he was in. Was it GP2 with Charles? Oh no, F2 uh, Charles. It was F2. Yeah, he yeah, switched to F2 at that point. The, yeah, just so that sort of shows the level that that car is designed around Max. Mm, yeah, hundred percent, and I think that's really starting to hurt Albon. You know, he had that clash with I think it was Roman Grosjean uh, okay. for once, not Grosjean's fault. Um, absolute shocker on that one. The penalty, I think. Well, I think when we first saw the penalty, we thought it was for the incident with Pierre at the start, and I was kind of thinking, "Hang on a second, what?" But he got then, pushed off. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, then we saw the incident with Grosjean and. That, I've got to admit, was, was, was Alex's fault. And that floor damage he received as a result, again, was Alex's fault. So, yeah, I, I think it was all really of his own... Own oh, accord. It was his own fault this weekend. And a weekend where, you know, Max was stru- struggling. Obviously, he had the engine failure towards the end of the race as well, had to retire. This was really where Albon could have shown his stuff and been up there. And he just wasn't this weekend. Yeah, was but, like 15th? Uh, I think he, yeah, I think he was beside. He was second last. I yeah, think, next to Giovinazzi, Gio. obviously had the had, had the penalty, and yeah, it really was not great. But I tell you what, I'll I'll, I'll spare you any more trauma because no, I know right. you're a, I know you're a big Albon fan. And we'll move on to another driver who has really disappointed me this season in Valtteri Bottas. You know, Mercedes on a whole had a very difficult weekend, 
and you know, obviously with your Hamilton with the penalty and there's been a lot said about that but for me I think that penalty was absolutely valid can't really uh, you know defend no. defend Mercedes in that one they made a mistake it they happens. went a bit Italian it did you know they they looked across at the mon- at the uh, at, at the Ferrari guys and said you know what we'll we'll, we'll take a page out of their book uh, if their book <laughs> for strategy exists I think they're they're coloring yeah. in with crayons at the moment over at Ferrari but you know it. it it wasn't a great race for Lewis, although he did bring it back. Um, I, mean, I, I think it wasn't really his fault, was it? It was. No, the team's I feel fault. like he met, played, like, did the recovery perfectly, considering you see how True. Bottas did, where he couldn't get out of sixth for ninety percent of the race, and then yeah. you have Hamilton, who's like, what is it, twenty three seconds behind Gasly after mm. the stop or whatever, and then is up in seventh at the end of the race. Yeah, in fact, from, from from an actual race driver's point of view, Hamilton had a great race, yeah. but from a you know, from the team's perspective, he didn't yeah. because you know of that. It wasn't Hamilton's fault. Is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Bottas, on the other hand, what can you do with Valtteri Bottas? He's in the fastest car, which is about a second faster than anybody else around one lap. And they proved that in qualifying. Yet he's half a second behind his teammate. Doesn't really seem to care about that. And falls down to what was it? P six, P seven on the first lap. Six they did that by in the Ascari P- chicane. Exactly. He's getting overtaken by Renaults, who argue have the worst engine on the grid at the moment uh, you yeah. know i just don't what, have yeah what's going on with that with bottas i don't i don't know i think it's like you said where once bottas gets a contract he's a bit like a reverse massa where yeah. he's like i've got my contract i can relax now i don't need to go for the wins or well because he's only got one win this season like yeah exactly has hamilton's won basically five, everything else five yeah. and then max has one mm. so it's just like what you're meant to be you're in the top car on the grid you have arguably the best driver ever as your teammate. Okay, he does put in brilliant performances against Lewis, so that warrants some respect towards Valtteri, but then you can't get past a Renault or some McLarens. What are you doing? Like, Exactly. I, I don't know if it's something to do with the new engine mapping rules that got brought in. Mm, and perhaps. Where they're running... But the Merck's never been able to follow well. Yeah, so, that's true. I think the Merck is designed to race at the front. And it's like those... dominant Red Bull, isn't it? Like, get pole, yeah. just lead pole, lights to flag. Exactly. It's the way Mercedes have looked at this. You can design a car to work well in traffic, but that's that car's not going to be the best it can be in clean air, if that makes sense. And so Mercedes have gone the other way with that. They know that they've got a car that nine times out of ten is going to be at the front of the grid, so they don't need to design it to work in traffic. They can design it fully to be out at the front and absolutely dominate from the front. So when we get into a situation like today where... Bottas is chucked back, and you saw on the straights he was struggling to, to get past. That car was very, very draggy. So, yeah, I mean, thankfully, there's not many more tracks like Monza. Mugello's going to be interesting. I don't really know how that's going to work out. Um, I, I need yeah. to do a bit more uh, research into Mugello and what type of track that actually is. But, yeah, we'll see. I, I think they'll be they'll be back on it for Mugello. But, you yeah, know, before we start talking about next weekend, we've yeah. got to talk about Ferrari as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, I feel like I said this in, in, in the in the video yesterday, uh, my instant reactions, but every weekend now, I'm sat here and going and saying, oh, you know, Ferrari, they've had their worst weekend today. And it's happened again, you know. I, know, it happened, I, I thought know. I said it in, in, in Spa and that'd be it. They'll bounce back in Monza. No, they won't. <laughs> and, you know, now they said, oh, well, we're, we're going to change things up for, for, for Mugello. We're going to put a new lick of paint on the car. We're going to go okay. for a uh, for a classic a classic livery. Sorry, a new lick of paint is not going to fix your problems, mate. There's, there's bigger problems going on at Ferrari, you've got, you know, children running the strategy department. Oh God, yeah, I think I, I tweeted I think I tweeted out like four minutes into qualifying they were already arguing over the radio with Leclerc over what strategy and who's getting the toe. I'm like, we're four minutes into Q one. And you know, Vettel out in, in the first part of qualifying as well, P seventeen. Charles Leclerc goes out in um <clears throat> in uh, Thir- Q two. Q two thirteenth, wasn't it? Yeah, and it was their worst qualifying since nineteen eighty 80- one? 80, I was going to say something. 81 or 87, something like that. Yeah. It was, I think it was 81 with um, Arnoux Love and... Michele Alberto. That's the one, yeah, exactly. So, you know, it's just... What is going on for Ferrari? You know, I, I, in fact, I, 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 I said this to you yesterday. I said this to you yesterday. Yeah, they got in all the, these 150 doctors and nurses. They've been working on the front line throughout the current situation that we're in. And I was just sat there looking at it thinking, mate, have they not suffered enough? They've had to go through all this, and now they're having to watch both Ferraris in eyeshot of where they were on, on that main grandstand. They saw Vettel bin it with a brake failure in the first four laps of the Grand Prix. Then when they look to their right, about 20 laps later, they see Leclerc bin it into the wall, having made a mistake yeah, for the no. Parabolica. 
Like, uh, like I don't know. I think the Seb one, like that was nothing to do with him, was it? We just saw. Oh yeah, that wasn't Seb's fault. So, but then it's like, why did you have the brake failure? <laughs> what? <laughs> and Charles won. That was all down to him. That there's no, you can't blame anyone for that because he didn't. There was no one massively in front, and he was getting on the power so early in Parabolica. Mm. And we've we've seen as soon as you lose these cars, you can't. It's not like in the mid to like early 2000s where you could catch a slide it just seems as soon as these go they have such a far back centre of gravity or centre of rotation that they just go so yeah I don't know and I think Ferrari at this point it's easy to bash on a team while they're down isn't it and especially Ferrari because we know where they should be they should be up mm. at the front they should be winning races they're the most historic team they're going into the thousandth race X, y, X, Y, Z whatever we can say but then it, it gets to a point in your spending the equivalent, if not more, as Mercedes, you're getting a hundred million dollars a year from Liberty Media. You're getting all of these bonuses. You get your rose veto, and you still manage to make a mockery of your team and your drivers. You have a four-time world champion in there, and you make him look like he's a rookie. Yeah, it, it was when they it was when they picked up the car having had the cars crash, mm. and then they proceeded to drop it. <laughs> I think that just that just that sums, that sums up, up Ferrari. <laughs> It does. It really does sum up for it. They're getting the McLaren Honda treatment at the moment. They really are, you know. It's a matter of time before Vettel comes. I can't wait for Vettel's last race for Ferrari because I think he's going to go in. We've seen he, We've seen the tensions building up now. We oh, really have seen gosh. those tensions build. It's going to come to a head at some point. If oh, it comes right. to next weekend, that's going to be really bad. I you think know? it's going to come sooner than the end of the year. It, it could do. It really it, could do. And because it's, we saw uh, how bad it was at it's gonna be great when he was watch. just saying about wanting to get pitted. Yeah, and they were just like, we talk about the... it later. I'm like, sorry. <laughs> like, just, wait, we're in a race at the moment. I need to pit. It's, it's just, it's 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 a joke. It really, it really, really is. Um, but on the subject of moaning, there's one more. There's one more drive I want to moan about this weekend. I think you know exactly what I'm going to bring up um, because we had a, we we had a bit of a bit of a bit of a chat over Twitter yesterday. Yeah. I um, uh, <laughs> Esteban Ocon. Esteban so Ocon. Yeah. 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 Esteban. Uh, Oh, well, I spent Ock off the pace. I think yeah, was the uh, was was, was the better description of him today. Look, I mean, he came on the radio. You uh, think of it this way: you've got your you've got your, your boss at work. You you're you're working in say, let, let let's say you're working just in a, in a restaurant or something. Oh yeah, or a corporate. We'll go, we'll go to the restaurant. You're working in a restaurant, and then the big manager of the entire chain of restaurants is there, right? And you're sat doing some you, you just I don't know, you got to walk around taking orders or whatever you do when you when you work in a restaurant yep. and then all of a sudden you say you know what I'm going to have an outburst in front of the entire <laughs> restaurant right in front of the head of the chain and just tell everyone how fucking <laughs> shit my, uh, my my company is that's basically what Ocon did at the end of the race he had the Renault CEO there and he goes and says uh, he, 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 the, the team were just trying to shut him up over the radio and I put out this thing on Twitter and Tommy from WTF1 decided to, to comment on it, which of course opens it up to it's every a, Esteban Ocon, Ocon simp fan. in the world who have come at me at this one. But for me, like Ocon, just, you know, today yeah. P8, it was okay. He was still miles off the pace of Danny Rick, but over like, the course like of the season, week? well, yeah, like last week he was what, 15 seconds behind him or something. It might've even been worse but when uh, Ricardo started picking up the pace. Yeah. But Ocon has really disappointed me, not just this weekend, but for the entire year. You know, I said at the start of the season, I'll give him a bit of time to work his, his way in. And I said, I'll yeah. give him till Silverstone. It's yeah, been past I... Silverstone now. It's been several races past Silverstone. Yeah. And I he's still think... not performing. I think that the excuse of saying he's had a year out kind of wears thin after you've had, what, eight races in now? Uh, yeah, round so, eight. It's like, how how long can you give someone like I I think Fernand, I, I don't like Fernando Alonso I really dislike the guy I think mm. he's going to jump in that car after his year out and two years out and make him look like a fool because <laughs> Fernando is a brilliant driver but like Esteban the I I've just never seen it this is what I was saying on Twitter yesterday I've just never seen he's had the good odd good race here and there and oh yeah he fought against Max in f3 gp3 whatever it was and he has this massive vendetta against him he's never going to fulfill that vendetta he's never going to beat max the only <laughs> fight that they'll have is in bloody park Fermi. <laughs> it's yeah it, it, ocon like I, there was someone that came up with me on twitter and it's like 
oh, it's too early in the season. Like, mate, we're halfway through the season now. Like, there's got to be a point where you've got to say, you know, Ocon is not doing a good enough job. Sorry, is getting rinsed from, like, the third (laughs) race in. (laughs) Exactly. Like, it's just a complete mess. I know. Um, But Ocon, you know, yeah. Like, Bottas has been rinsed very early on. So has uh, Albon. Where's all this hate for Ocon? Like, I'm sorry. Like... His choice I, I don't to want to put hate series last year. Yeah, I don't want to put any hate on him, but at the same time, well, I mean, it's basically what this channel is at the moment. But you know, at the same time, he's not been doing good enough for a guy that replaced Nico Hulkenberg and for a guy that was tipped to be in a Mercedes this year. And Darrisek would have done a worse job than Bottas. So, yeah, uh, yeah I don't yeah. know. I, I think the fact that Hulk came back, got third in qualifying, like seventh in the race, mm. having not been in F one for nearly like nine months was it eight something no, eight, like that yeah yeah eight nine months at that point and then you have Ocon who's taken his seat and is just putting in mediocre <laughs> subpar to subpar performances. subpar performances compared to his teammate yeah you just like look at it and you're like why well, wasn't really worth the switch was it <laughs> hey yeah I don't know but what we'll do is we'll move to something a bit more positive now you know I want to talk we a little will. bit about Carlos Sainz before we move to Magello. okay yeah because I want to I want to at least end on the positive note we've done a lot of moaning today but Carlos Sainz you know some could say it was a missed opportunity today. Mm. I would disagree. You know, it's the first time he's actually been to stand up on the podium with the other drivers <laughs> as well. You know, yeah. the first McLaren podium in, in since 2014 that Lewis Hamilton hasn't, hasn't had to take out Alex Albon to award them. You know, it, it's... It, I'm sorry, I brought up Albon. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. Um, but, <laughs> but, you know... There we go. I've, I've, set, I've set him off already. But, you know... Carl Sainz, he did well. So I, I, I was really impressed actually with the way he handled himself after the race because give him an extra lap and he probably would have got Gasly. You know, he was four tenths towards the end, and you know he goes to you know, I put everything I went, I, I I put everything into it. Didn't make a mistake, and this is what happened. Yeah. And fair play to him. I feel so bad that that man is going to Ferrari next year because he's just going to be a muppet. He's he's, he's going to look like that. And well, you've got Danny Rick who is beaming at the moment, looking at both McLarens in the top three for the first half of that. Grand and they're getting Mercedes engines next year. Exactly. Uh, you know, for me, it's one of the worst career moves in history. He was going out and saying uh, at the start of the weekend, "There's, there's no never a wrong time to move to Ferrari." No, there is a very bad time to move to Ferrari, and it's right now. <laughs> yeah. So you know, it's it's yeah. just a bit of a it's, yeah. it's a bit of a mess for science. But what do you take from his weekend as, as a final point? Oh, on, on, on yeah, Monza? yeah. I think he was actually the best driver over the weekend, really. Yeah. Like third in third in qualifying yeah. as well. <laughs> third, and then I. When we saw the Hamilton podium or the penalty, I was like, "Oh, we're gonna get, we're gonna get a McLaren one too. But then, obviously, the Charles incident happened, and then Stroll. Got, got, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. I, I, Lance had a brilliant weekend as well. To be fair, I, I, I feel for Stroll. Stroll has been sat there on the podium, and nobody gives He's a talked, shit. No, <laughs> it's like, no one cares. It. Know, it's I, like, I, oh, Stroll, you've had a podium before. You got, you got your love in back in 2017. It's fine. Who it's cares? Because, because <laughs> he's a paid driver. Yeah, that's another reason. But I like, Stroll's had a good weekend as well. Year. We've got to we've got to put it in. There. I know Charlotte from the Purple Sector is going to yeah. be watching this and fuming at the moment. So no, Stroll no, had a very good weekend. He there did. you go. You happy I, now? I've, well, I've, I've I think, I think Stroll. this year's cemented him as showing he should have a place in F one. Whereas yeah. maybe previous years you could have said, mm. but yeah, he's shown through gritted Paris. teeth. I'll give you that one. <laughs> he, sh- he, do- he has a good quiff and a brilliant set of gnashes. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, look, Stroll has definitely come on this year, you know. And, and to be fair, in the since maybe since since Perez returned, actually, I think Stroll has been the stronger racing point driver, um, which is a very weird sentence to say. And it, it's starting to make me think that maybe Seb could be Seb getting that com- seat. Well, more the fact that if Seb does get that seat, I won't feel as bad about it anymore mm. because at the moment Stroll is performing better. So. Yeah. So yeah, just before we finish off today, let's let's talk about Mugello because you know new circuit on the calendar. Um, no one really knows what's going to happen. So yeah, Elliot, if you just give me a quick yeah. three, uh, a top three race prediction and the bold prediction for the weekend. So top three: um, Hamilton, Norris, Verstappen. I think there might be a bit of chaos because I think Lando smashed it this like Monza. Really, mm-hmm. is really doing good. And bold prediction for the race: uh, Bottas and. I don't know, Bottas to crash out with probably like Albon or something, knowing my luck. <laughs> okay, interesting. That's it. Interesting. I'm going to go with... Oh, you see, I want I, I, I want to be bold, but I'm, I think this is where Mercedes will come back. I think it'll be... I'm going to go for Hamilton, Verstappen, Bottas. 
which is boring, but hey. I mean, I gave a boring... Well, I didn't give a boring... I said Ricardo for the podium last week, I think. But yeah. I, I, I think, you know, we're going to... I feel like Magello could be a good race, but we're going to see it as a bad race. It'll be like Stereo 2.0, where it's yeah. such a great Austrian Grand Prix, and then it all kind of went to pot later on. Um, bold prediction. I'm going to say Ferrari have a resurgence. I don't know whether I believe that, and I'm saying that, and the, and the little clown Bonotto is spinning around my head at the moment, but I, I feel like this could... Uh, yeah, maybe maybe it's a new lick of paint, or whatever they do, I have a feeling... It, maybe it, the FIA should better. just let them run last year's engines for one race. <laughs> maybe, maybe, or maybe, maybe what they should do is they should let them run their 1950s car. I mean, they're, yeah. they're celebrating their thousandth Grand Prix, and their 1950s car is probably quicker than what they have at the moment. So, may, may, maybe that's it. But hey, we'll finish things off there. Eddie, before we do finish up, do you want to tell us a little bit about what you do over on your channel, uh, oh. and of course, all links that we down in the description below. Gosh, I don't know what do I do. On my, I try and be funny, talk about the races, <laughs> and then one other thing during the week. That's about it. Um, that's, yeah, that's me. <laughs> Fair enough. Basically what I do as well. So if you like my content, you'll like Elliot's as well. Really underrated channel, pushing for 100 subscribers at the moment as well. So make sure you go and check him out. Like I said, links to that will be down in the description. Uh, but yeah, thank you so much for watching. If you're still here, well done. It's been a bit of a long episode, but uh, congratulations for waiting until the end. Let me know down in the comments below your predictions for the Tuscan... Is it the Tuscan Tus Grand Tuscan Prix? Grand Prix. Yes. Tuscan Grand Prix. Uh, and yeah, your top three and a bold prediction for the race as well. We'll go through them at the end and we'll see if any of them were correct in next week's episode. I would do that for last week's, but I'm pretty certain no one's going to put Gasly, uh, Sainz, <laughs> Stroll as the podium. If they have, fair play, you've it. got a time machine. But, <laughs> you know, hey, thank you so much for watching there, guys. Hope you have a lovely rest of your day and I will catch you all in the next one.